In this demonstration, we're going to talk about how to import demographic data like you see in, in this Excel sheet into our Invivo 10 project so that we can have all of the data that the demographic data hooked to our particular participants. So you'll see the sheet should be set up like this. The top left corner, whatever is in that corner, is what Invivo 10 will take as the name for the classification. And in this case, it's going to be child. The other items in the top row, it will consider to be attributes. Those are the categories of demographic data that you're going to assign to each case. And then below, in the first column here, you have the names of the cases. In this case, I have children's names here. Now, if it turns out that you um, have children who have the same first name, such as you've got two Dianas, you will need to make a change in your Excel sheet before importing so that you have a unique identifier for each case. So it needs to say Diana 1, Diana 2, or whatever, however you decide to solve that problem. So let's go to InVivo, and I'll show you just how to import this. InVivo is going to create a case node for each of the children, and I've got a lot of children. I've got over 200 children, so um, I don't want those just to all be in there at the same, uh, all mixed in together with my other nodes. So I'm going to cre first create a node, and I'm going to label it student so that I can have InVivo load all of the case nodes into this as child nodes underneath this student node. So let's go to the Create tab. We're going to create a new node. that. I'm going to call it student, and now we've got our student node and we're ready to go. So in order to import the Excel file as a classification sheet, that's the InVivo term, we want to go to external data, and um, we'll go to classification sheets, and we're going to, this opens the import classification sheets wizard, which will just walk us through the process. So the first thing we do is browse for our Excel file which I'm going to find here on the desktop and ask it to open. Click the Next button. We're not doing source classifications. Instead, we're doing a node classification. So we want to change that box. And I'm going to leave the Create New Attributes If They Do Not Exist button clicked. On the next screen, um, specify how nodes are represented in this file. As you saw in, in our Excel file, mine are represented as names. and I, as I said, I want to I want Vivo to put those in the student folder, so I'm searching for that student folder so that the location for these nodes in this project will be nodes and then the child student folder underneath it. We're going to select that. I'm um, leaving the create new nodes if they do not exist checked. I'm going to the next one. For unassigned values, I'm going to let the program just type in the word unassigned, and if there's something that's not applicable, which I don't really have in this particular file, I'm going to leave the word not applicable. You need to check the date order, month, day, and year is correct. However, the date delimiter is not a forward slash in my file. Instead, it's a dash. I need to, to correct that before I ask it to import, and then I'm just going to click Finish. And in Vivo, just in a very short order, has created inside the program a classification sheet with all of my demographic data. So here we see all the students listed down the left, and then we see each of the attributes across the top. Now if we look at a particular cell, for instance, let's take, let's, we're going to be talking about Diana, so let me find Diana's um, entry here in the classification sheet. Here she is. I'm going to click on that. If we look here, it says that she is at school AG. If, for instance, if there were a mistake and we needed to change that, if we would, if you will click the little triangle right in that box, you have all of the attributes, values that have been loaded in within Vivo, and you could select a different one if you needed to. When you click the little triangle, you see all of the available values. Later, I'll show you how to create new values as well. This is Diana's survey, and I want to be able to code everything in Diana's survey so that it has all of these demographic characteristics attached to that. And so in order to do that, for a source that's already uh, in your program, you, you want to select the document file, as I have just done here. You want to go to the Analyze tab at the top, and we're going to code the source at an existing node. We're going to look in the student folder where, where we should find Diana. And I'm going to click the button next to Diana and click OK. And now everything in the classification folder in Di on Diana's row has now been hooked to Diana's survey file. Let's do the same with Imari. So here I'm going to click on Imari, 
go to the Analyze, Analyze tab. I'm going to code the source at an existing node, and I just need to look for Imari's node. Here he is. We're going to click OK, and I'll do one, the last one, Kalia, same sort of thing. I'm going to go to the Analyze tab, code sources at existing nodes, and I'm going to look for Kalia. Here she is, and I'm going to click OK. Now, if we wanted to see um, how these, what this coding on the survey looks like, if you'll go to the Nodes and Navigation view, we're going to we're going to close that, and um, let's let's take one, let's look for one of the let's look for Diana's. Let's look at her source. Now let's look at coding stripes, and you see that it's coded to Diana. It's coded to journal process and learn words.